Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. What's going on, guys? Locked out men right here back with another podcast for you guys. We got so many topics to talk about today. I'm going to try and make it 30 minutes, but of course, you know, we're we, we going to we gonna groove together. We're going to vibe together. You know what I'm saying? Yo, in today's podcast, we're going to talk about the closing of the Virginia ports. We're going to talk about Covenant shutting down SRT. Yo, I, I got this crazy, crazy video. It was a while back, but dude bust in the window and screaming, I'm going to somebody which really didn't happen though we're going to talk about that uh that crash up uh, that rescue up over the bridge that was uh wayne's boom and my girl concrete jungle is back on youtube where you been concrete where have you been I know it's been a while that you haven't been on YouTube. It's like every time you come on YouTube, girl, you're always at a different company. But I've been rocking out with her ever since she started at U.S. Express. What's up, guys? Lockout Men right here. And welcome to another Lockout Men podcast for you guys. This is where I come and chill with you guys, come bring news to you, come and vibe with you, come and hit you with the interviews and all that good stuff. I'm hoping that you guys like it. And if you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit that bell for more content like this. And this is where I give it to you. You feel me? You feel, oh, see, Concrete, you got me saying your favorite word. You feel me? I like that. Well, we're going to start off with my girl, Concrete Jungle. Yo, this young lady, I, I did an interview with her. Make sure you check out that interview with her, Concrete Jungle. She started way back in, in at U.S. Express. I did try to get her to come up to J&R Schwugel, but unfortunately that didn't work out. Uh, you can you can check out the check out the interview and she'll explain why that that didn't work out at all but uh she's back and she she was with another company uh KLLM and she was you know saying that she was with them for a while but it just didn't work out she went back to Hirschbach <laughs> yo here's her advice about Hirschbach. Hirschbach, and if you are considering going over there, I will tell you, do not go. Um, I did three weeks over there. I was dissatisfied with my whole experience from the truck I received to um, the pay per load was terrible. The load, the miles were trash. Like I felt like I was at a brand new company, and I actually spoke to. Um, my DM, a fleet manager, and somebody else the day that I turned my truck in, I actually just turned just turned my truck in like four days ago, and they were asking me like, what's going on? And I told them like, listen, the miles over here are trash for this pay per load. Pay per load is great when you are getting miles and you're turning in something every day. When you're on trips that take a 800 mile freaking trip and you feel me, it's only gonna take you two days to get there. And y'all got that shit stretched out three, four days for a delivery time. Y'all fucking y'all drivers. You're not going to make no kind of money. None. Even though that companies like that, that gives you like good CPM, but they only, they, they give you like, like maybe 800 mile loads that she's right. That is technically supposed to only take you a day and a half or not even, yeah, a day and a half. But then you try to stretch it out over over a couple of days. It's only five days in a week, Monday through Friday. It's only five days in a week. An average driver can do about eight, eight hundred, six, I'm sorry, seven hundred or maybe no, no, six hundred, six hundred plus miles a day. So you figure six hundred Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday you go home. And then you come back 
then do it all over again. Wash and we rinse. But if you get a low, uh, a, a six, uh, or a 600 mile load that you pick up on Monday, and you don't deliver it. The video shows the dramatic you don't deliver rescue it of until, a truck driver. Hold up. There ain't time for you yet. Ain't time for you yet. Why you keep coming on? Ain't time for you yet. But you get a load that you pick up on Monday and deliver it on Wednesday. You only did 600 miles for, th for technically three days. Three days. You pick it up on Monday and it delivers on Wednesday. But you know you can get it there like Tuesday morning. Get it there Tuesday morning and then come on and get another load that it gets you to deliver Wednesday morning. Deliver Thursday morning. Deliver Friday morning. You know what I'm saying? And then you go home and then reset. I don't I I, I don't understand why 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 companies or dispatchers or or what or low planners does does that to their drivers. Now maybe they just do it to some of their drivers, but if you don't say nothing, if you just let them keep doing it, they're gonna keep doing it. And if you don't say nothing, you're gonna get you you're gonna get effed. You're gonna get fucked. You know, and and concrete says she wasn't having that shit. Concrete, concrete, she is all of. Look, I'm telling you, what you guys need to do is watch that video, that interview that I did with her. Concrete is about her money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She is all about the bag. That's all she ever talk about is the bag. She don't never talk about nothing else. So concrete is all about her bag. So the girl, for the little bit of experience that she's been out here, she knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's looking for. And she felt that going, you know, she did a stint with Hirschbach before, but she felt that going back to Hirschbach would give her another opportunity. It, it just didn't work out. It, it just didn't work out for her. So here's her advice for Hirschbach. Let me see if I can get it there. Here's her advice mm -hmm. for Hirschbach. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? It's it, like, I don't know, but I, I'll tell you, you know, the HB family, definitely I would not recommend anybody. Y'all know I give you the real, and that just ain't it over there. I'm telling you like this. That ain't it over there. We have, in our orientation class, there were seven of us. Out of all seven people, there are two left. We just, like I said, I was only there three weeks. I just turned my truck in on Wednesday. You feel me? Like, imagine that. Everybody, there, bro, everybody pretty much left. And the other ones that I, that are still there, um, one of them, I don't fuck with him like that. I didn't really care for his personality. But the other guys, they're looking right now, you know what I'm saying, to see where they want to go. Because it, over there, it's just fucked up. You feel now, she did her stint over at uh, KLLM, which didn't, which didn't produce nothing over there. If you guys is not moving essential products, water, toilet paper, paper, uh, medical supplies, you, you, pretty much, you pretty much stuck. You pretty much messed up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of the companies, I believe she, she said that with KLLM, uh, Tyson shut down. They do. They move product out of there. That uh, that other food plant that where that COVID nineteen issue was up, that was shut down. They do a lot of they do a lot of movement out of there. So yeah, if if you're not moving no 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 goods, it's it's kind of hard out here, and it is getting a little bit harder for the trucking company. So let's switch gears. Trucking companies, man, they trucking companies is 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 finding it is is finding it hard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see, let's see. Do 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 do. Let's bring up right here. Bam. It says here that Covenant shuts down SRT's uh, Tarsicana terminal and operations relocate 
to Chattanooga headquarters. Now, the only good thing out of this is that their drivers, they're not laying off their drivers. They, they, they put in their drivers on different routes and on different accounts. But Covenant says that citing economic challenges tied to the corona, to the CV pandemic, as well as the need to focus on, to focus resources towards targeted businesses, uh, targeted business units, sub, Southern Refrigerated Transport, a solo driven reefer subsidiary, subsidiary of Covenant Transport Group said that it will shut down its terminal and headquarters in Tarsicana, Arkansas, according to the internal memo obtained by Freightways. So this information comes from uh, Freightways that that they saying that that uh, Covenant is shutting down SRT. The move is to put, the move is to be placed by May first, twenty twenty, is an operational consideration and not a closure. SRT will relocate its fleet and support functions between Taganooga, Tennessee, Greenville, Tennessee and Tennessee locations, and it will continue to operate as a solo-driven fleet. So that's a good thing. They're not shutting it down. They're not shutting it down. They're just, they're just closing. So a lot of the guys that think that they're shutting down, they're not. You know, they're just closing the main headquarters and just moving everything across the way. So, <sighs> With that said, you know, you can, you can, woo, you can wipe the sweat off your brow, bruh. You, you, if you're working for SRT, you're good. You're, you're good right now. So if you guys want to know more about the situation with SRT, go over to Freightways and, uh, and check it out over there. Moving on, man. In, in, in news, man, this is a non trucking, <laughs> this is a non trucking, uh situation right here man i came across uh you know me i i watch a lot the of video videos shows the dramatic How many, rescue look, of a truck driver look obviously you look obviously you want me to come and talk about you since you keep cutting me off we're gonna do that right now all right so check this out man a truck driver you know he was driving his truck and all of a sudden the winds just got the best of them. It's so much so that it pushed him like over uh over the bridge. And it was a high wise bridge over there off of I-64. <sighs> Not a good sight. Let's go to now. Now we can go to the video. And we can now we can go to the news report 13 w news or 13 news now this is what happened after up to 60 mile per hour winds pushed wayne boone's tractor trailer off the path of i-64 west early monday morning three firefighter stations and other first responders rushed to boone's rescue as he sat inside this vehicle 70 feet above the elizabeth river that's chesapeake firefighter justin beasley on the rope beasley and the team worked together through strong winds blowing a mix of water and diesel fuel at them to help boone into a harness i was struggling trying to get the, the harness on and being careful not to step on the windshield you know so i would fall through boone says his work vehicle was empty an easy target even for an experienced employee driving slow and uh so hearing Beasley's words made all the difference in this moment when he felt like giving up. In all, it took about an hour and a half to rescue Boone. To Boone's mother, Barbara, it felt longer. Well, I am, this man is beyond blessed. You know what I'm saying? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the, the rescuers. Thank the prayers that this man was 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 able to stay calm, 
cool. He wasn't he he wasn't paranoid. He wasn't scared. He let the he let the firefighter do what he needed to do to rescue him. And he got rescued. And um and this is just to show you that things could happen out here in a blink of an eye. You blink your eye, boom, things happen. You know what I'm saying? The winds, the the heavy winds and everything just just kept pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and pushing them over. And it was that God had his hands on that truck until the rescuers got there and, and, and held it up until they got that man out of there. So whatever you do, whatever you do, whenever you start your day, just, just, just give thanks. Just praise the Lord. Just say thank you. And just have him to watch out for you for that day. And, and hopefully, hopefully you, you'll be able to make it through. But just to let you new guys know out here, things happen. You know, it, it ain't no joke. This, this trucking thing is no joke. Take it, take it from me. I, I know better. <laughs> I know better. I, I know. Things can actually happen. Um. I'm trying to reach out to this guy. So if anybody out there knows, uh, what's his name, Eric or Wayne Boone, if you guys know Wayne Boone or anything like that, let him know. Uh, try to try to get me in contact with him. I would love to, you know, I would love to talk to him and and see, you know, his experience. Or if you guys know anybody in the uh, in the in the firefighter what's his name justin beasley if you guys know him definitely send me a contact you know send the contact my way so i can get in contact with him and bring him on the podcast and uh and talk about the ordeal all right so uh if you guys want to know more on that this is from 13 news now so definitely go to you know 13 news now and watch the rest of the rest of the video and uh and and the article and the article all right well hmm. this is not trucking related now this is not trucking related i was trying to get to there but the lady kept cutting me off she was like yo we want to talk about this i'm like okay i'm i'm, I'm not going to cut you off i'm going to do it but uh this is not trucking related this is kind of stupid <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so this video, actually, this video is about two years old, but uh, a subscriber sent it to me and he actually wanted me to do a reaction video. And you guys know that I don't do reaction videos like I used to, at least not on this channel. But the video was so funny. <laughs> it was so funny that I had to that that I had to talk about it and bring it to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Now look, truck drivers, listen here. Always protect yourself from from any any crazy person out here. Always have some type of some type of protection to make sure that you don't run into guys like this. <laughs> he look like Craig Mack too. This dude look just like Craig Mack. I kid you not. I mean this this dude. <laughs> Hold on right quick. Hold on. This dude look just like Craig Mack over here talking about he's going to try and somebody. <laughs> it is so funny. So he had, <laughs> yeah, go go over to uh, World Star Hip Hop 
and check that video out, man. It is so freaking hilarious. He actually got up on the he actually got up in in the bus and started, you know, and confronted the guy. But the guy, you know, stood his ground and the dude didn't do nothing. He just left off the bus. He knew he knew something was going to happen. He he knew that that dude wasn't going to stand for it. Like, really, bro, you're going to come at me like, yo, try it. Try it. I, I'm just saying, just try it. I'm right here. But it's <laughs> it's so funny. You guys go and uh, check that video out, man. Uh, let's see what else is in the news, y'all. What else is in the news? Yo, Virginia, you know, Virginia. Let's see. Uh, Pots, Pots, Pots Mouth, what's that? Pots Mouth, Virginia. They are closing the cargo terminals as shipping volume drops. Well, you know, during this pandemic that's going on right now, it is now affecting truck drivers and the trucking industry and the ports. There's no, there's not that much freight coming into the ports. And if there's not that much freight coming into the ports, then there's not going to be that need of truck drivers to take the, to take the freights out of the ports. So it came to the point that Virginia decided to close their ports. Let's check out the, let's check out way, uh, 10 wave.com report. The Port of Virginia will soon close a cargo terminal amid the coronavirus pandemic. Portsmouth Marine Terminal will close effective May 4th as shipping volume decreases. Officials said ships that usually call to the port will instead be moved to two nearby container terminals. In a statement on their website, leaders cited data that <laughs> cargo entering the port is just <laughs> dropping. Well, uh... <clears throat> <laughs> That's some good stuff right there. Oops. Okay. That is some good. <laughs> that's some good stuff right there. I mean, it's woo. Went down the wrong, went down the wrong, went down the wrong tube. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, it, it's, it's, this, this, this CV is, is really doing the damn thing. I mean, but on the good, on the flip side, on the good news is, is that some of the governors, are planning to reopen uh reopen some of their states uh the governor of georgia governor of georgia let's see here it is here's a report from cnn.com that the governor of georgia says that he's going to reopen some businesses as early as Friday. This coming Friday. Governor, it's your thought process and how this is weighing on you. This could be one of the most important decisions you will ever make in your personal or political life because so much depends on getting it right. Opening, reopening too soon, you can imagine the potential consequences of that. What goes through your mind when you think of that? Well, I can tell you, I don't give a damn about politics right now. We're talking about somebody that has put their whole life into building a business that has people that they love and work with every single day working in many of these places that are at home going broke, worried about whether they can feed their children, make the mortgage payment. You know, these are, these are tough decisions, no doubt. And I've had to make many of them. And I can promise you I will have to make more of them. But we also got to think about the effects on our economy and on these individuals from a mental health perspective, from a physical health perspective, and literally for people being able to put food on their tables. And I believe that this measured approach has got us to the time to trust our people to keep going after and beating this virus, but do it in a way that is responsible. And I believe the people that own these businesses, as well as the people that work, on, work in them, are okay doing that for a few more weeks till we can move into phase two. And it may be that they can't all go back to work every day. Okay, 
Yeah, he's not talking too much about that, but look like he's talking about some politics or something like that in that in in that uh video. But let me let me just uh let me just key point it right quick. It says Brian Brian Kemp announced Monday that certain business can reopen this week in a move that breaks the majority of the state leaders and defies the warnings of many public health officials. Kemp says specifically that health centers like gyms, bowling alleys, body art studios, barbers, hair and nail salons, and massage therapy business can reopen as early as Friday, April 24th. Theaters, restaurants will also be open, uh, will also allow to be open on Monday, April 27th, while bars and nightclubs will remain closed for now. The decision follows the new guidance unveiled by President Donald Trump last week meant to help states loosen loosens their social distancing restrictions. According to an influential model often cited by the White House from the Institute of Health, Georgia hits the projected peak for daily deaths 13 days ago on April 7th. So in a move, he was like, look, I'm about to open back up the economy. We need to get we need to get our local businesses back back to work. We need to get our people back out and and start socializing again. So with that said, how that's going to work, I don't know. How the social how the how the restriction and the social distancing going to work in bowling alleys and and in the gyms, I don't know. Are are you going to go to the gym with a mask on? Maybe. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to social distance from a person that's right next to you on a treadmill or that's right next to you doing deadlifts? I don't know. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll have some type of, of, of restrictions in place. Same thing with, uh, with barbers and, and nail salons and, and, um, and, um, and uh, beauty salons. Being that that is a close proximity, are are you guys is only going to do appointment only? You know what I'm saying? Maybe y'all just restricted down to just appointment only. Maybe one or two people that's that's in that's in the shop. Are you guys going to restrict uh, foot traffic because a lot of barbers re, re, you know rely on foot traffic to continue their business? You know what I'm saying? But are you guys going to restrict that, you know, and how that's going to work out as far as mask and, and, and glove work? You know what I'm saying? Tattoo artists, we well, tattoos, that's a given. You got to wear gloves. And a lot of tattoo artists, they wear a mask anyway. So but still, how does how they're going to restrict, uh, you know, how how those restrictions going to work out as well? So. Yeah, Governor uh, Governor Kemp. So if you're in Georgia, you you might be getting back to work, might be getting back to business, might be getting back to normal, even though that this is a new normal as early as this Friday. So check it out. All right. So before I get up out of here, y'all, this video is so freaking nasty that it hurts. My man, my man Ricky reached out to me and I'm still trying to. You know, I get, you know, him being a truck driver, it looked like he's a teaming truck driver, but, you know, he's kind of like busy. But he did reach out to me to talk a little bit about his ordeal at the Loves. Hold on right quick. Let's see. And as a matter of fact, I've been to this Loves. I've been to this Loves before. It says here. View and timeline. So right here, it says I've been to this loves back in back. Let's see. Hold on, right quick. Loves travel stops. It says I. It says I've been here at eight twenty two, Wednesday, July twentieth. I mean uh, Wednesday, 
uh, July 19, 2017. When I was there, when I was there, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't experience this. Y'all see this right here? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? And this is in the loves shower. What is that? Leeches? Leeches. Oh my God. That goes to show you the pain of. Uh oh. This cop is. Uh oh. This cop is after somebody, y'all. This goes to show you the pain of, of the lackluster cleaning tactics in this particular loves. Now, like I said, when I was there, I don't think I experienced that. Somebody, I don't experience that. Look, Ricky, if you uh, see this video, yo, man, give me a call. Uh, give me a call so we can uh, set, up, uh, set up a time so we could talk about this, man. This is crazy. I want to know what, what did you tell them about they lackluster cleaning tactics. This is not good. This is not good at all. This, this is why, number one, you, when you go in the showers, you check to make sure that the showers are clean. You, see, you, you feel me? You check and make sure that these showers are clean. And this is another reason why you don't barefoot in the showers. So if you don't have like, like shower shoes or flip flops or something like that, what you do is put some towels on the floor. You put some towels on the floor and then you do that. Or better yet, my question to you guys, are you showering in this pandemic right now? You know what I'm saying? How is your how is your shower tactics now during this pandemic? This is what I want to know. <laughs> this is what I want to know. What is your tactics or what is your tactics or what are y'all what are y'all doing uh as far as taking you know taking a shower, you know, in a public public shower? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that's it guys. That is it for today. I really appreciate that you guys came along for the ride if you like content like this and more don't forget to what what i want you guys to do don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell for more content like this and yo what i want you guys to be i want you guys to be blessed out here i want you guys to be blessed i want you guys to be safe i want you guys to be fruitful and i want you guys to be faithful you know what i'm saying and take time out it, it only takes a couple of minutes to give thanks to whoever whoever you worship it could be god himself jesus christ it could be allah it could be jehovah it could be anybody you want but just as long as you give thanks and have them to watch out for them for you and ask them to forgive your sins if you have any i have sins i ask for forgiveness all the time, all the time. And before I get up out of here, shout out to my nephew, Kevin. His baby boy was born today. Shout out to you, nephew, man. Uh, as soon as I get home and as soon as we can all come back together, we can, uh, we can enjoy baby Ala, Ajay, Ajay, you know what I'm saying? Hold on right quick. I got I to gotta find out what my, what my little great, Great nephew, I think. Great nephew. Great nephew, I think. I gotta find out. Hold on. Let me. Two very boring minutes later. Elijah. <laughs> Elijah Aiden. I ain't gonna say the last name. But Elijah Aiden. He was born seven pounds and two ounces at four o'clock this morning. So shout out to the proud papa, my my nephew, best nephew in the world. 
Yo, enjoy these moments, man. Enjoy these moments because you're not going to get them back. So enjoy these moments and be the best father. Uh-oh. I guess that, be, oh, there we go. I kind of blurred out of there for a minute. Wow, y'all see that ghost? Okay, well, I, I guess that's telling me to hurry up. But anyway, I want you to be the best father you can be. So congratulations on being a first-time father, first-time parent. And it don't come with a book, bro. <laughs> be there for your son and and make sure that, you know, that you're in his life and just do what you need to do to make sure that your son and your and your future wife is is well taken care of, bro. All right. All right, y'all. Lockout men. And this is Lockout Men Podcast. I appreciate you guys coming on. And again, with all this good stuff said, come back for another podcast. I'll be at you in another video. On that note, we are gone.